KTL exclusive. Oh, oh, it's the car in the building. We ain't sorry if we kill it. Riding for my God, niggas know I'm never serving. Spreading love, cause our people hurt. Yeah, is it oppression or depression? Is it old? By our elders, we've been failed by the people that we thought were supposed to lead us. Go ahead and get that Psalm 144, verse 12. Yeah. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 144, 12. Yeah. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. And this is what we want. We want our, strong, our sons to grow as plants in their youth. We have no growth in the black community. Why? Because we're always stuck worshiping and loving and caring for our oppressors. And we're always hating on the people that we're not supposed to give me. Second Samuel, hold it real quick. Second Samuel, nineteen and twelve in the NLT. We literally hate the people that we're supposed to love, but we want to be married twenty-three years to the damn devil. All of these white people walking by is a devil that God speaks about. That's right. And God don't love y'all. God only loves the so-called Black, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indians. God sent His Son to die and to save the captives. Who's the captives? Who's been the captives? These past millenniums, it's always been the black and Hispanic people. We don't see white people just going up on slave ships like it's normal. We don't see that. We see that happen in the black and the brown communities. Right, guy, get this. That our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of of a palace. I said that our daughters may be a cornerstone, a pillar after the similitude of a palace. If a palace is already built and they want, and we want our daughters to be just like that palace, then we need elders, grown mature women and grown mature men to be able to lead the youth in our communities. But we don't have that. And so you got fucking 30 year olds on Tinder waiting for a little 23 year old boy to hit them up. It's not it. You got 50 year old men worrying about little ass girls instead of growing up their kids. You feel what I'm saying? Go ahead. That our gardeners may be full, affording all manner of stone. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our in our streets. I said that our sheep may bring forth thousands upon thousands in our streets because we want our nation to flourish. But what does the white man do? The white man puts a, a plant parenthood in every single low-income black community. Why is that? Why is it not um, thousands uh, uh, like tens of Planned Parenthoods in the suburbs where the white people live in the white communities. Why is that? Because it literally was made by a racist white lady to di diminish the population of black people. Right. And we get fed this lie, this this uh, this uh false advertisement of, oh yeah, it's free. You could just come abort your baby for free. What? They're literally, in, and of course, black and Hispanics, we don't have the money to just go and just pay for multiple abortions. So of course we're gonna take it because of the status and because of the position that they put us in. So they put us in a position and they, they try to false advertise a way out of it, which just hurts our communities even more. And that's why we're never able to grow. You know how many thousands of Martin Luther Kings or thousands of Malcolm X's that could have been born already? That we just abort because the white man allows us to do so? And I'm so glad, I'm so glad they banned that shit. So glad. Because I, I, we already know it was for the white man. Because it's 60, 60, like what, 61% white people in America. So obviously they have more abortions than black and Hispanics. They worried about their population diminishing. But I could give a damn about that. I care about the black and brown people that are trying to find a way out that just go around having sex and making babies and killing them. That's murder. <laughs> right, guys? Right? But this is the message to the so-called black and Hispanic. I'm going to show you what God, how God feels about us. All right, my brother? Let me show you how God feels about you real quick. One, one, one second. How he feel about you? He love. How you know? Because I saw he do. He wanted to love. He wants you to love. He want me to love. Uh, how, he how you know he love you? Because he sent his son to die for me. So why 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 did we go through slavery? Why did we go to slavery? He didn't yeah. like slavery. Hold on, let me say, okay, that's what I'm saying. Why why did we go through slavery if he loves you? He didn't like slavery. That's why he made Moses go through the water, go through the water with some of the people. I know, I can understand that. I'm saying, why did we go through this then? Because people took it among themselves and they never listened to God. They took it upon themselves. God never said slave us. So. God is powerful, right? Yeah. He's all powerful, right? Yeah. All knowing. He can do anything he wants. He controls the whole earth, right? Yeah. So how could we do something that God doesn't want us to do? He put us in this earth to do things and rule things over the earth, not take advantage. They really took it among themselves to do that. Yeah. But let me show you. I'm going to show you why, how God really feels about you. Because it's not, you don't just learn this. In the church, you don't just learn this anywhere. You're not gonna hear this nowhere else but right here, right now. 
the world, that's 1800 years ago. That would never happen. You see, it says Israel. Yeah. Moses took the people to the to the river and followed Moses. Moses had a job from God, sent them to the river and parted the river for it to knock down certain people that was put people in slavery. You see, I said Israel, that's the same people that he had walking through the water with him. Yeah, I know, I know that, yeah. So, Slavery was a thing that the white people took up amongst themselves and took them, took advantage of certain things they had power to. But it's running, they're running out of time. Their time is running out. I, I, I know their time is running out. I'm going to tell you why we went into slavery though. We went into slavery for not keeping God's laws. God beat them the same way. The same way you have kids and you beat their ass because they don't listen is the same way God is beating our ass because we don't listen. As a people, as a nation, we don't listen to God. And you see it in the Bible. Captivity after captivity. Babylon, Assyria, Persian. Greek, Roman, America, we grow through these slaveries because we don't listen to God. That's but I'm going to show you what God really feels about you. Go ahead. This is, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God himself said, you guys are holy. That word holy is kodash in Hebrew. It means to be separate, set apart. He said, we are set apart to God. Go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. A what? A special people unto himself. God literally chose the nation of Israel to be a special people to himself. The same way you got a, uh, your favorite pair of shoes. That's yours. Ain't nobody wearing it. Ain't nobody gonna step on it. Ain't nobody gonna know what's in a little scuff. I'm wiping it. That's how God, that's how we are with God. God. Above all people. No, below. Above. No, above. All above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God literally said verbatim. That the Israelites are above everyone else in the face of the earth. That's, right. That's how he feels about you. That you're better than all of these white people. And you're better than all of these Chinese people. That you're better than all of these Arab niggas. All of them. You're better than all of them. Because God said so. That's right. Give me 2 Samuel 7 and, 3 and 23. Right? But nobody's going to tell you this. Nobody's going to read it out of the Bible and tell you this. You know why? Because it's an agenda. What's the agenda? To keep the black and Hispanic sinning so God is not on our side. We said the same thing. But yo, God bless yo. You're doing the right thing. All up, you alright? All up. That's it. All right, yo. All right, go for it. Seven and twenty-three. This is the book of Second Samuel, chapter seven and verse twenty-three. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel? Even like what? Even like Israel. So, the Bible is literally saying that there's nobody else that's like us. It says what is a question. What people is like us? What people cook like us, dance like us, sing like us, talk like us. Nobody does what the Israelites do. Nobody can do the things that God, of the people that God chose. You got, you got a question? You got a question? You want to know we appreciate the church. This is the church right here. Oh, oh, look, Proverbs 1 and 20. I'm going to show you why we preach right here. Though. Watch this. Proverbs 1 and 20. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 20. Wisdom cries without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She what? She uttereth her voice in the streets. So wisdom is in the streets. That's what the Bible says. It's not in the, it's not in the Catholic Church, not in the Christian Church. Wisdom is in the streets, and that's where we are right now, in the streets. Give me Matthew twenty-two and verse nine, because this is what this is what a lot of people who who claim to believe in Christ and claim to believe in God. This is what your Lord and Savior told us to do: come in the streets. Go ahead. It's the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-two and verse nine. Go ye therefore into the highways. And as many ye shall find, be to the marriage. Do what? Be to the marriage. And that's the point. It says, go into the highways and the hedges where we are right now and bid to the marriage. Tell the black and Hispanics that we are the people of God. Tell the black and Hispanics that we have to come back to keeping God's laws. That's what he always wants us to do. Give me Luke 12 and verse 51. And what a lot of people have misconstrued is that we think we're supposed to be equal with everybody else. So all these black people, all these black activists, these fake ass black activists, try to fight for equality. It's book of Luke, chapter 12, 20, 20, 20. and verse 51. No. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Huh? I tell you nay, but rather division. But what? But rather division. division. So Christ literally came to divide people. 
But everybody thinks that Christ is just some all-loving, all-inclusive, and just want to uh, bring everybody together. Together. My brother, can we talk about the black community, the youth in the black community? I see the show you got, and you can't walk away from me. HBCU, culture matters. Let's talk about the culture. Brother, I'm not Muslim. Let's talk about the culture. Sis, can we talk about the black community, please? Can we talk about the youth? Brother, you got to take that, that hoodie off, though. You know what I'm saying? Can we talk about the youth in the black community? As somebody that's a youth in the black community, I would like an elder to talk to me. My brother, you gotta, come on, bro. I'm just, this is a thing, right? We supposed to look up to people like this. We supposed to look up to people that's gonna hold down the black community. But I can't even have a conversation with an elder of our black community. And this is why, hold on, this is a thing. This is why niggas is killing each other in the streets. No, because they don't, they wasn't taught nothing by the elders. Bring it up. Let's take, so let's really talk about the black community. Okay, one thing, I'm going to show you one thing in the Bible. Give me Isaiah 42 and 22, right, real quick. Because what I want to know is how, what can, as because you, you guys are older than me, what can your generation do to better the black community right now? Okay, okay, what type of guidance? Spiritual, okay, yes, yes, I agree. So what about when the father is not inside the household? Then what? Y'all want everything now, y'all don't listen. Y'all should bring that whooping back because I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, I'm beat the serious. ass. I'm really, I'm, I'm no. serious. Yeah, of course. Because you know what? Because you know what? Y'all got too much power. Because soon we hit y'all, y'all want to call the cops. Y'all want to call the counselor. <laughs> no. See, personally me, I put the money on the table. No, I'm whipping some ass. Okay? That's all I got to say about that. It's my first time in New York. Love y'all. Bye. I got to right. go. All right, but, that, but I agree with beating your children. Every kid should get their eyes beat. All right, that's that white people shit. That's that white people shit. Ain't no time out beating your ass. That's what the Bible says. If you spare the rod, you spoil the child. There you go. There you go. The yeah, and look, the Bible does say that you gotta fear your mom and your dad. You feel what I'm saying? But it's a thing. As the elder generation, we need to teach the young generation the laws of God. Nothing else. Nothing else that we've been doing for the past 400 years have been working. But we see a community that keeps the laws of God. Like me, myself, I have a daughter. I'm never gonna leave her. You know why? Because I believe in the laws of God. I keep That's the laws right. of God. If I didn't believe in this Bible, I probably would have been out with some other girl. Probably would have been left her. Because I don't have, it's not my responsibility. I don't really have to, boom. Me, I'm 22. It's easy to say when you're 22. Exactly. Uh, oh no, I pr promise you. you it ain't never gonna happen. Go no, you know, I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you why it never's gonna happen though. <laughs> I've been, been 22. So that's funny. That's funny. But you know what, Lord? All the distractions. Take that distraction away from them. The, the phone, the game okay. system. Inject the Bible into their life and see what happens. Yeah. No, exactly. We do, need to, we do need to inject the Bible because the Bible is the. Exactly. A lot of and a lot of people. This thing. A lot. Of, this is a thing though too. The parents that's doing it, they have to be indulging in the Bible too. Because I, if I, if you just teaching me something, but you don't really believe in it or do it, I'm not gonna really follow. Because what you, you just saying stuff. You feel what I'm saying? And you try to make me do something that you're not even doing. I'm not gonna listen to you no more. So as the older generation, we need to see an example of somebody keeping the laws of God. You feel what I'm saying? Like not leaving your kids, keeping the Sabbath not eating what god said not to eat doing what god said to do things like that is what is what we need to see in our elders like as a real real life walking example you feel what i'm saying because as a, a young one any anything could just make you s swerve and move around they do, they do got it, but it's all in the control of the parents they got no control you know they were calling cops in a minute. Or they were telling yeah, that's true, that's true, But you know, kids, you know why though? Because these niggas not keeping the laws of God. That's right. That's right. Like I said, I'm 55. My kids are now. They now. They're talking about this. They're younger generation. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But they're talking about this. But these kids get 
access to guns all the time. And who's putting the guns in our communities? Exactly, and this is why. And it's the white, fuck the white man. It's the white man. That these damn devils. It's all these damn devils putting the drugs, the guns, everything in, in our community. That's bad. Here's the thing: as parents, we gotta understand our enemies and teach the kids that these white people are your enemy. You got little ass, little ass, fake ass gang members walking around with white people as gang members. A white person rapping about killing black people. That's sad. That you allow that. You feel what I'm saying? But it's because we weren't growing up to be able to listen. You see this man right here? This man is your brother. You see him, you see yourself. I see you, I see myself. That's right. Anything that right. you do to me, I want to do to you. That's what we got to teach them from young, but we don't teach them yeah. that. We go, we send them to school to the white man's um, dumbass um, educational system. That's then they come right. home and they're just playing their game all day. We don't even teach them nothing. Come home from work, I'm tired, I ain't want, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, like, as a generation. Exactly. Right there. Oh, praise okay. Thank you. Oh, for y'all have a beautiful day, look at the fly, check out the information. We are the biblical Israelites of the Bible. I know y'all heard of Kanye. And look, look what happened to Kanye. I'm gonna stand on it. That's right. Tiff Tones, I'm gonna stand on it. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right, King. All right, give me um, give me that uh, Isaiah 42 and 20. Hold on, give me that. Uh, it's with Isaiah to the three verse twelve. As for my people, children are their oppressors. That's what? Children are their oppressors. Like he said, the children be running around calling the cops. Bro. Um, coming over on them because the Bible really said children are their oppressors. But we got to change that. You cannot have no little ass 14 year old boy running your life. You're a grown ass man. You feel me, God? And women rule over them. And what? And women rule over them. And now we have black men allowing their wives to control their life. Allowing women to control what they do, what time they come home, how they act, how they speak, how they went to sleep, when to eat. We got to understand that as men, we got to be leaders. We got to lead them. We cannot right. be led by no woman. When the last time I ever seen somebody get led by a woman? And it turned out good. Don't say Harry and tell me. Because we still, we still was enslaved. <laughs> yes. Okay. But they don't know about that. Yeah, they know, they know. She was keeping the laws of God. That's, that's right. right. That's right. This book of Isaiah to the 42 and 22. Bring it out. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Uh, the Bible is talking about black and Hispanics. It says this is a people robbed and spoiled. Look at the Hispanic people. Literally got their land robbed from them. Right underneath their feet. Go ahead. They are all of them snared in holes. Uh -huh. And they are hid in prison houses. Where are black people at? Hid, hid in, in prison, prison houses. houses. Where are Hispanic people at? Hid, hid in, in prison, prison houses. houses. The Bible is literally saying that the black and Hispanic people, the people of Israel, the people of God are going to be hidden in prison houses. But we don't see nobody making this correlation with anybody. If you go to a Christian church, they're not teaching you this. They're teaching you that everybody's just gonna come together and everybody can just gonna get loved by God and everybody's just gonna be this happy, cool by y'all family. And that's not inside the Bible. That's nowhere in the Bible. Right, guy, keep going. They are for a prey and none delivereth. It said black people are for a prey and none delivereth. We've been getting shot down in the street for how long? Killed in the streets for how long? And nobody saving black and Hispanics out of their captivity. And you know, all these white people saying, I love black people. I have so many black friends. Then get out of America. Get out of the land that your ancestors stole. Give back everything that you inherited from the ro the rape, rob, and murder of black and Hispanic people. But nobody has, nobody got time for that conversation. No white person ever will have the time to say, you know what? I did inherit stolen goods. I'm going to give it back. But I bet you if I stole a white man's jack, a white man's phone and I gave it to my brother, the nigga's gonna be like, bro, that's my phone. You gotta give it back. Even though he didn't steal it, you gotta give it back. 
You know what I'm saying? How did I look if he didn't give it back? That's what the white man is doing. They took your land, they took it from the whole other side of the earth, and they literally said, I'm not giving it to you back. You feel what I'm saying? I wasn't the one that was there in slavery. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard from a white man. Trespassing. Look at this big ass dumb old nigga. Trespassing on stolen property. I bet he hates black people now. I hope you do, because we hate you too. You and your family. Right? We gotta, like, we gotta understand, like, these, like, look at this old ass nigga. This nigga's probably right there, uh, 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 talking bad about black people in the 60s. But well, then you want you see a little old white lady in the um supermarket. Hi, sweetie. And you go smile and uh push her card and pick up the No, I'm not doing none of that. These are the people that benefit from our demise, the people that benefit from our destruction. They literally get rich while we keep dying in the streets. And we think it's okay to keep living like this. Give me Zachary 11 and 5. You got a question, King? How do you feel about the how do you feel about the sign right there? How do you feel about the information that you've been hearing? I just got here. So what? Oh, you just got here? Okay, okay. How would you feel if I said that? What's your nationality real quick? Puerto Rican? Okay. How would you feel if I said black and Hispanics are the best people on the face of the earth? You agree with that, right? You don't need the Bible to see that black and Hispanics are better than everybody else. But that's in the Bible. You ever read that in the Bible before? Give me Colossians 3 and 12 and a CEV. I'm gonna show you in the Bible. In the New Testament too, because everybody be like, oh, you're stuck in the Old Testament. My fault. In the New Testament, verbatim saying that we're better than everybody else. Yeah, see you. This is the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 in the CEV. God loves you. God loves you. That's possessive. You feel what I'm saying? That's possessive. The God loves you, a specific group of people. Go ahead. And has chosen you as his own special people. God chose you, the black and Hispanic people, as his own special possession. If God chose us, who can be better than who God chose? Because they he obviously would have chose somebody else if they were better. But that's directly out the Bible. When we go to the Christian church, when we go to the Catholic church, when we go to these seminars, they're not teaching you what God is saying, not teaching you what the Bible is saying. All they're teaching you to do is to love, to love and adore and have respect for the people that raped, robbed, and murdered your ancestors. The people that benefit from slavery, that benefit from rape, derby dose, taking slaves and putting them on horses and kicking both horses and ripping them apart alive feeding babies to alligators these are the people that christians want you to love but that's not in the bible go ahead this is the book of deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6 for thou art an holy people unto the lord thy god god said you're special god the lord thy god has chosen you to be so had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself well, like i said again go ahead above no below above no equal above uh -huh. all people that are upon the face of the earth i'm gonna say that of god's mouth he created black and hispanics to be above all people on the face of the earth that's why we can we can go through slavery we can go through rape and murder and still come out being uh coming in like the top percent look at kanye came from homelessness to be the, the richest black man in America right now. But this is going through what black people go through on a regular basis. This is how you know that we're just better than all of these people. Because every single white person that's walking in, they all should be rich right now. All of them. They had a 400 year head start. They all should be top Fortune 500. But you got white people sleeping on the streets. These niggas are ass. Because they're not the people of the Bible. All right? They're just the people. Give me Jeremiah 30 and 16. They're just the people that God is. God is waiting to overthrow, right? Because God is just. Would you agree that God is just? You know, what goes around comes around. We work through slavery. And I know God is not looking at this like, eh, it's cool. They don't have to pay reparations. They could just, they could give, hold on, they could give 40, no, my fault, $8 billion to Ukraine, but don't give no reparations to black and Hispanic people for what we did to them. Let's not do that. Let's go help the white man and say F the people that's living in our country <laughs> you feel what i'm saying and this is the people that we that's why i really hate it because we look up to these people 
and we think that oh just because they're nice to us and they smile at us that they're okay but the same nice person that smiles in your face will stab you in the back and we've seen it happen to the native americans they came with all these little eyes blankets and all these hugs and kisses with war behind their back and what they do give them what smallpox all these type of diseases and literally almost made a genocide in native and spanish communities Dealing with the same people today. Go ahead. This book of Psalms. Oh, this book of Psalms to the 51 and 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The what? The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Mouth were smoother, than butter. smoother than butter. Butter. Go ahead. But his heart was hostile. His words were softer than oil. Yet they were drawn swords. His words, get in the KJV, I said his words was as sweet as ever, but it was still drawn swords. Got the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Uh, what? But war, war was, was in, in his heart. heart. Said, but war was inside of his heart. The white man could come up to you all night um, with a deal. Just like this, bro, just look at what's happening to black people in the industry white people come down or jewish people come down give them music deals and once they stop hitting deals now they got to pay all of that money back now you just broke you got all these chains little ass car and you're in debt now you feel what i'm saying it don't matter how, it don't matter how high status you are if you're black or hispanic and they don't like what you're doing they're gonna cancel you they're gonna try every single way to put you back where you came from you feel what I'm saying? But they don't do that to white people. They don't do that to uh, Russians and Germans and uh, people from Ukraine. They they literally allowed Ukrainians to come through the, the border in Mexico, but won't allow Mexicans and Haitians to come through the border when this is their land. That's Texas right. is their land. And gave them housing and Airbnb is uh, uh, propagating um, and funding hundred thousands of Airbnbs for people from Ukraine. But when it's black and Hispanics that need help and seek refuge, we can't find it. Give me limitations four verse 17, because all of that is curses that was said to happen inside the Bible. And once we start following the Bible, and once you start looking at what God wants us to do, then finally, we're gonna get the reparations that we want. We're gonna get the, the retribution, right? the righteous, godly retribution. This book of Lamentations to the 417. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for, for vain hope. As for us, as for the Israelites, as for the black and Hispanic people, Native and Seminole Indians, our eyes have failed for our vain help. Go ahead. In our watching, we watch for a nation that could not save us. We've literally watched for a nation for 400 years that could not save black people. We had black people in the 1800s saying that white people were good and we were going to change. We had black people in the 1900s saying that white people were good and that things were going to change. And now we have the same shit in 2022 and nothing is changing. You know why? Because we're seeking help for no reason. These, listen, a person that puts you in slavery cannot save you out of slavery. They put you in slavery. That's like saying if I shot you and I uh, give you a bandage, I'm just now I'm just now we're just equal now I'm good no nigga I gotta shoot you back I gotta get my get back That's but white people think oh it's 2022 we're all equal we can be good and we can love each other no I'm gonna show you what God wants to happen to white people God y'all have an amazing day and check out the flyer check out the information all right king it's the book of numbers to the 35 and 33 so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are God literally said don't pollute the land what do white people do pollute the land just dump landfill in the ocean. That's what white people do. But God said, don't pollute the land. Go ahead. For blood, it defiles the land. But blood defiles the land of America that white people shed. Go ahead. Right. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein. Uh, and it said the land, the land cannot be cleansed. All of the hundreds of millions, seventies of millions. Bro, the, bro, put like half a billion, bro, by now. A black and Hispanic people, a black and Hispanic blood that's been on this land cannot be cleansed. Go ahead. The land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, uh -huh. but by the blood of him that shed it. God literally said the only way that black and Hispanics are going to get reparations is when what happened to us gets happened uh, happens to them. That's 
they killed us, God said their blood has to shed on this land to cleanse it. That's what God said. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah to the 30th, 16. But nobody wants to have that conversation. Nobody wants to see their oppressor go through a we rent. It's just, oh, you know, it's okay now. They gave me a little $23 job, $23 hour job. I could, I could, I'm good now. You know what I'm saying? They gave me a little stimulus check. They gave me a PPP loan that was that I didn't have to pay back. <laughs> and now I'm good. That's what black people really fucking think. But listen to what God says. Go ahead. My brother, do you my brother with the blue hat, do you have a minute to talk about the youth in the black community? You don't got time? What about the youth? Sad. And this is why you can't look up to black people no more. Who the fuck am I supposed to look up to? Not him. <laughs> Maybe him. But not that guy. Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. The Bible says all the people that devour the black and Hispanics, they're going to be devoured. The people that put Hispanics in slavery are going to go into slavery. The people that put black people in slavery are going to go into slavery. This is what the Bible is saying. But everybody thinks the Bible is some spirit, some this spooky loving book no it's not god literally wants reparations for black and hispanics whether we it's not gonna be money you feel what i'm saying it's gonna be blood right what's your nationality white it's white how you you said what it's boring boring yeah. oh boring one so there's like an exciting way and there's like a boring way and you're the boring way. Yeah. Damn, it really, that's a, that's a two-time loser, man. Damn, what the, f you're supposed to be up right now. It's your kingdom. Is that times have change? Times definitely have changed. It is gonna change even more. Let me ask you a question real quick before you leave. How do you feel, you, you don't have time? Are right, you going to the slavery and you're white? Go for you. Yeah, a damn washcloth. You look me right in the eyes, try to tell me a lie. You got too much pride lately. I've been thinking and meditating. Scripture keep me straight, but I'm always keeping tabs on some shit. I've been watching all your actions and shit. Hey, I try to be like Malachi three and six.